Hi, this is Fred with Quality One Engravers. I'm going to do a real simple uh, cutout shapes. And I have my plate set up as a 24 by 48. And that happens to be my table size. So I'm going to just draw a box, a rectangle. And I know the sheet of material that was provided to me was 12 by 24. So there's my 12 by 24. Now I know the positioning of my engraver has this x-axis at 4.125 because I have little dowel pins and this is at 3.125. So this is where my piece of material resides. So I'm going to go File, Import and I'm going to actually import this shield that was uh, given to me and I uh, designed it in uh, uh, Casmate. So I'm going to import this and click it on the screen. So this is the shield. I hit F7. I can zoom in on it. This is what I want to be cut out. And I'm going to hit F6 to zoom out. Now it's not actually this part. This is the part I want left with. So I have to create a tool path around it. So with it selected, I'm going to go to engrave create a tool path and I'm going to do a mail. Now you might use an 060 cutter to cut it out, you might use a beveler cutter, you might use a lot of different things but if you're using an 060 tool or an end mill or things of that nature uh, you have to make a tool for it. In my case I'm going to cut this out because it's in aluminum with a two and a half millimeter end mill and then I'm going to click down here and make it 25 so the color matches up. And the material thickness that I was cutting through was around 30,000. So I could make this probably about 60 so that it rides on the material. And then I want it to be done in one pass when I'm cutting. Now this is the direction of the cut. This is conventional cutting and usually if you're cutting aluminum you want uh, I'm sorry, this is climb cutting. So you want the cutter to climb around the outside. So I'm going to click on OK. Now if it were plastic, sometimes you want conventional cutting and you just click it the other way. So now what I do is I look at this and I can see, if I click away, you can see that this is my P25 layer and then this is my P1 color. This being the original. Now I just position this any place on, on my uh, plate and I need to determine how many I can get on this 12 by 24 so I'm going to hit F7 and initially I'm going to just take this and I'm going to put it about in the corner here because I know I have clamps that hold this around and I'm going to use this icon here which is the array or you can go under uh, somewhere in here is, is array I have this as a icon so then I click on the X and it just happens to be that the last time I did this it was about the right amount of spacing so you can see if it was three inches or too close together I need a little bit of material around it but likewise I couldn't get a fourth one in there you know to to because I'd be cutting so close to the end that my material would fall apart so I know I can only get three so I'm going to just go to a safe number, 3.3, 3.5 should be good. And then I'm going to click on the Y value. Now I can see it's going up in the negative direction, or actually which is. So I need to change this to go into the minus direction. So as I click down, it goes a tenth of an inch down. And then what I want to do is see the entire plate, and I'm going to click on so I can see that I can probably get seven out of here. So I need to decrease this. And let me see if I can get one more and maybe one more. So I can see that if I zoom in down here and I hit Alt N to show my tool pass, I have a little bit of lands here that I that there's going to be material left. So I'm going to hit F8 to zoom out to everything, close, and then I'm going to just uh, control Z to undo it because I just wanted to see what the fit was now in this case I'm going to hit alt N again so I'm looking at now this is just the tool path I want to duplicate so I'm going to hit F6 
and so I can see everything and I'm going to go back to my array and it remembers the last settings that I had and I'm also on object to object I could have done space between also so I'm going to click on my X three times and I'm going to click on the Y so I can get 21 parts out of a sheet and then I close it then I click on on the piece of material and I notice that the center of this is 10 and an eighth by 15 and an eighth so I'm going to select everything inside here and change this to 10.125 10.125 and then I'm going to change this to 15.125 and enter so now this is centered on the plate now when I go to actually engrave I'm going to hold down the alt key and select all of these to engrave now I always keep my original but it's going to engrave this one first, second, third, fourth, fifth. And if I want to see what the order it's going to engrave in, I can go control. I have a hotkey for it, which is control alt, alt L, or you can go under layout to uh, by list, sequence by list. I'm going to hold the shift key down, so here's the sequence that it will engrave. Now, one other thing that's pretty important to do and I should have done this in the beginning when I was showing it to you is where is the start endpoint on this so I'm gonna click away and I'm gonna double click on just one of these and I can see or I cannot see what oh I can see the start endpoint is right up here it's a little hard to see but there's the start endpoint so I'm gonna zoom out <clears throat> that spot is okay but a better spot would be probably either down at this corner or right up from the corner so I'm gonna click on this one and go right mouse click and make that one my start point so it'll start here go around and end up here <clears throat> the last thing you want is a mark somewhere near the top people typically don't look at the bottom as critically as they do the top that's where they'll be running their finger around to to look at parts so I'm gonna apply that Oops. and you'll see that it, it remained that it's starting from that position and then F6 or F8 and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete all of these other ones because I changed just the one now the thing that you don't want to have happen is you definitely don't want the start point now this is an easy shape you can pick almost any spot but let's say it were a capital letter E you would not want it in this sh in those shapes so let me just type in a capital letter E and make it a little bit bigger so that we can see it and let me just change the font to something that's a little easier to see something like courier okay so here's this letter and I want in this case you would want the start endpoint to be somewhere in this area but you would not want the start endpoint to be right here or here even though they're nice interiors you could have it start here and here but typically I would have it start right here or one of these two corners one of these two interior corners but you would not want the start endpoint to be right here because when it finally did break out it the cutter will cause uh, some damage to your part unless you're really holding it very securely so again I fixed it now I'm gonna select only the P25 I'm gonna go back to my array it's already set up seven down close select this click on engrave and output and then I will go up to the top here make sure that my feed rates and clearances are right in this case I would lower this to about half an inch per second for my routers and my plunge rate at about 0.25 and the clearance of 07 I might make that a little bit higher 08 or so uh, so that it would clear when the part swung out of there if I wasn't holding it and then I say OK and plot it to the engraver. Hope this helps.